Electronic crimp connections. You either love them or you hate them. Or do you? I used to hate them, unreliable connections that were a nightmare to make and then came loose. But then I realised I was really using the wrong connectors and tools. And now, using the right circumstances, I've become a bit of a fan. In a recent project, I mentioned the use of crimp connectors. And this video is going to show what that involves and how to successfully make those connections. Useful for connecting to switches and creating your own connectors. If you need evidence of how good crimp connections can be, then just look at CAT6 network connections. Copper cables crimped into connectors with a bandwidth of up to 10 gigabits per second. However, in this video, I'm going to be looking at slightly more modest connections, simple connections that can be used in hobby electronic circuits. There are many advantages to these types of connectors, which I'll explain later. Some of the connectors I'll be covering are spade connectors, used to connect to arcade switches. Female crimp terminals, used for connecting to I2C LCD displays. And ferrules, used with screw terminals. The reason I had such a bad impression of crimp connectors is because of these. These are the type of connectors I first got started with and really they're not appropriate for most electronics. There are times you may want to use these red ones, but only with thicker cables. Really these are designed for automotive things and this is the kind of crimp tool that comes with them, with this wire stripper and the crimps. They're designed for use in car electrics really, but we can use it. So this is 0.75 millimeter wire. We can just strip that using that. And the color coding is the thickness of the wire. So red starts from 0.75 millimeters. And then you can use the corresponding color on those. And just one squeeze and they're done. And that's not too bad. I do use these in some circumstances, for instance, for running power to Neopixels where I would need a thicker gauge cable. But for most of my electronics, I'm usually using much thinner cable like this. So firstly, these strippers are designed for bigger cables and don't really do the job. You can sort of break it off if you try. Let me just See, the wire cutters on that are particularly useless as well. So I'll just strip these properly using these. Pop that in the connector. And as you can see, I can just pull the cable straight back out. So that's really not appropriate for that sort of wire. Really, this is the kind of connectors that we're looking for. This has got three different size of spade connectors, which is really what we're looking for. And this one has both the male and female sides. And I've got another box here. So this is one I've been using for a while. And these are the sorts of connectors that we really want to be looking at. Some larger ones, and some of the smaller ones, both of which fit well onto the switches, different types of arcade switches that might use different sizes. My mistake, again, was in buying these cheap crimp tools. Uh, I mean, all the tools I use are, are very inexpensive, but these are particularly flimsy pair. And you can see it's just got a very, very thin point for actually doing the crimping. And really that's not very good at all. It means that you have to say manually crimp the two parts separately. And it's just so fiddly and you don't necessarily get a good joint. And so we bring in the proper ones, 
So these are two different types depending upon the size. These have got the bigger size and these are for the smaller size. This is a SN48B and an SN2 uh, which cover most of the things that you'll need for these types of crimps. If you just look at these it's quite obvious these are quite a bit thicker and they have two different size of the crimp to cover the insulated and non-insulated part and it just goes there we go it should be quite a tight fit and it's pushing in on either side what i like to do is just put a bit of pressure on first so it's it's gripping it and then we'll come back to our wire now I'm going to insert this and what we want is some of the insulation to be at this back end and the wire to be out at the other end so we just pop that in as you can see that's actually made a really good connection and no matter how hard you pull that's not going to come off and it is a good electrical connection as well. And then the next type I'm going to look at is these two types of there, JST headers and connectors, which you can wire up using exactly the same technique as these ones. And you may find some of these quite familiar. If we take these, these are the same as the end connectors on jumper wires which you may be using for breadboards for instance so we can have a look at how we can do these ourselves you've got male or the female options and they come on these rings so we'll just take one of these off we'll take the other end of this And for this, we're definitely going to need the smaller die inside the crimp tool. So I'll just take one of these off the spool. Strip the other end of this wire. Just give it a twist to make sure all the strands are together. Then I'm going to use this tool with the smaller die. So this is the SN2. Again, it's got a wider and a narrower bit, which represents the part that's going to hold the insulator for the wider bit. I'm just going to push that into there and just squeeze down gently, not playing any pressure at the moment just holding it in place pass the wire inside till the insulation part is in and then squeeze as you can see that's made a really good connection it's holding the insulation and it's holding the wire and then these can be inserted into the plastic holders. There should be a little tab which lines up. Different ones have slightly different connectors, but there's a, a little plastic tab that then holds that. And that's quite firm. These aren't designed to have a lot of pressure on them but they're good for plugging into breadboards and there we can see we've just created a little wire with a pin connector at one end which can be connected into the breadboard and a spade connector on the other end which can be attached to an arcade button these can also be used if you have multi-way connectors 
For example, if you've got like the headers of a Raspberry Pi, you could take one of these, and these obviously would only cover a few of those pins, and you just insert, instead of using this one plastic one, you just insert them into here, and then you can create the, use these, create multi-way connectors. Then the final type I'm going to look at here, are these known as terminal connectors or ferrule terminal connectors. And these use a, a different tool. So this one's the HSC8 6-4A. And these come in a variety of different sizes. You can see from the very tiny, in fact I've got one some slightly smaller than that, all the way up to these big ones which would be used for uh, mains electricity. In this I'm going to show you how you could use them for wires. So these are particularly good if you're going to use screw terminals where you're going to insert the wire and then screw down. One, it's going to extend the life of these but also it's going to avoid the problem where you get one of the strands from the wire that doesn't get into the right terminals and could cause short circuits and cause problems. So I'm just going to use this just a short bit of wire just to demonstrate this. Strip the end. I'm going to insert this into this ferrule effect. Yeah, that one fits quite nicely. And then the tool for these is quite clever. As you squeeze it, it just squeezes the inside. You can see that it starts with a wide opening, and then as it squeezes, it just squeezes four blocks into the middle. Place it over the metal part, and squeeze, and there we done. And that's really secure now on the end of there. So here we've seen the four different types of crimp tools and crimp connectors. This one's more for automotive or the bigger cables. 0.75 millimeter is the thinnest. You really should be using with those. And these two, Effectively the same principle, but different sized dies. Now, in this case, I've got two different tools with fixed dies. You can buy tools where you get one crimp tool and you get multiple different dies, and those dies can be used for all kinds of different crimps. These are generally cheaper, and you buy the you can buy these with the whole packs of the terminal connectors that correspond to the same size. But if you wanted a more expensive, you can get the, the solution where you've got interchangeable dies on those. And then finally, we looked at the ferrule connector, which can be used to make much better connections when using screw terminals. Here's an example of the kind of things you get. So these are done. Th these are usually made using a more automated tool. It's like they just feed them in individually. Um, but it's essentially the same connection on each end and these plug into the breadboard. You quite often buy them as these strips which you can peel apart if you want. Here's an example of where you might see these crimp connectors. So if, this is off the giant button and this has got different connectors. It's got some that relate to the LED and these ones are for the connector. So the LED one on here are the larger ones. Which as you can see you need for these connect these larger connectors and these ones are smaller ones, I need the smaller connectors. They should be a tight fit, which makes a good electrical contact when they're plugged in. One of the main advantages of these crimp connectors is they provide a semi-permanent connection, reliable when connected, but can be easily removed when no longer required. This could also be useful where you can disconnect parts from the circuit, for example, when you need to get inside an enclosure, such as being able to disconnect arcade buttons when you lift the lid. 
Hopefully this has been useful. If so, please give it a like and let me know in the comments if you have any other examples of where crimps can be useful. Or indeed, if you don't like them, then I'd be interested to hear about your experience as well. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.